Shirts and skins, let's get it. Yo. Shirts and skins and we back again. The best coverage in college sports, we come to win. With Brandon, Mark, and Matt, no one go hard as that. Share with your folks and they'll learn where it all be at. It's just three of the guys, childhood friends that be setting the vibe with a few hot takes, jokes, and predictions. Love the Boise State, we now welcome you to listen. Shirts and skins, let's go. Shirts and skins, let's go. Bronco Nation, what is up? You're listening to the Shirts and Skins podcast on a Tuesday. I'm Matt Lamb alongside Brandon Minert. What's up? Mark Moss. Hello. Gentlemen, just the three of us today. Yep. Which is good. Yeah. Not a bad thing. Uh, It's week one, boys. Game week. We got a game Saturday in Georgia. And we've been there before. Yeah. We'll talk about that. <laughs> not to this specific stadium. Have not we? to no. no, not to Statesboro. State. We've Statesboro. we've been to Athens and Atlanta. This is where we've been. Um, yeah, so let's uh before we got on, we posted on Twitter asking if y'all had any questions for us out there. And we got some responses. And while Brandon pulls those up, if you're watching this video on YouTube, like it uh and subscribe follow us join in on the conversation exactly. who most people watch us on youtube most I viewers so. are on youtube are we still getting yeah. some apple is that the only other place that it's going is Apple? well right? all the like audio oh, okay. platforms like spotify, spotify really? apple okay. it goes out to all okay of them, a bunch you're of them. able to see all that yeah. information and it's way more on youtube it way more yeah. okay can we just jump into the comment that i think Let's everybody wants to know <laughs> yeah uh Braden white B white 291 asked an important thing that we've, I think if, if you've listened to the show, we have very few meetings off air. Most of our discussions are on air, just live free flowing, free flowing and live. That's how we live. Braden white asked, how did Bronco Blameyer get JD interview before you guys? Oh. Mark must have really pissed him off. And I think it's, <laughs> I, I don't think there's any question about that. I think we know we'd be, we know he pissed him off. <laughs> Mark, what is have you that said stint? to Dickie ah, that would get you? I have no idea. Over the years. It's been years. years. Certainly have not said anything critical whatsoever know, since we started this podcast. Forgive, never forget. On, probably. I know another person with probably. the last name of Minor who said some things. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a couple things I working I think that's us. more likely <laughs> the issue. I had a good relationship with Jeremiah. You had? I don't know. I feel like we had direct messages Couple years ago, yeah, yeah, on Twitter, back and forth, yeah. yeah. And now, crickets. Now nothing, crickets. Mm. Have you DM'd him recently? No, because the last one was when I answered. I did. did. You yeah. did. What's he saying? Uh, he didn't say nothing. anything. Crickets. Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he didn't say anything. So good for Bronco Blaymeyer yeah. for getting that. I actually haven't listened. I wanted to listen to it, and then it got pushed back, and then I just. It's been busy, and I have not listened to it yet. But I just uh, think, I think Braden, I think most of our fans, I think anybody that listens <laughs> knows that you're an impediment to us getting JD Stop on this show. I just it. think no. we all know if it. That's, yeah. I okay, think we all know on. it. Well, who else would be? My brother. Well, certainly <laughs> okay. not you. Your brother, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. That's a good question. I've apologized. I have, we have gone, be, I have gone above and beyond in singing his praises from this microphone. And on Twitter. And do you mean it? Of course I mean yeah. it. Uh, yeah, I mean it. Yeah. I. Maybe we're giving Mark too much credit. Yeah. Who I am threw, I? Uh, who I th- am I? He doesn't even know who I am. I think it's important to know that we're in the season, the season starting, and I think it's finally time for the hot take kind of cold punishment hot, time. Hot, hot punishment. <laughs> I put in hot punishment. I forgot. <laughs> there is a punishment, and I think some of Mark's, t- and all of our takes, are eligible now for <laughs> okay, partners. I'm just that's saying, like, that's eligible. just part of what it is. Yeah. It's part the of standard the has been set. I'm good. What's the standard? What? Well, I mean, the expectation of cold plunge, you say something dumb. I think as it gets colder and colder, we should take Mark out to the river and, oh. like, legit. Why, Mark? You're, you're just, just assuming. With <laughs> that I'm, I'm gonna assuming. Be the one. Stop. I think we're all assuming. Stop. <laughs> okay. If you're Not watching true. on YouTube, leave us a comment if you think it's Mark that deserves <laughs> to go in the river. <laughs> I do okay. want to. I do want to go to a couple Amnesty of the others. And up to this point, okay, you cannot bring back old stuff. It starts from today. <laughs> no. Statute no, of limitations. No, we yes. have receipts. 
We All have right. recorded receipts. All Here's right. a lot of the, the comments were, because there's big news since, big oh, yeah, news. we're actually going back to every week now. Well, yeah, we're back. We are. On. Another thing, too. Let's talk about Dickie. Hold on. Oh. There's been some new developments here. What do you mean? In, in that space. The access. The shirts and skins. Come on. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Come on. Well, that, that wasn't so much Dickie. Yeah, that, that wasn't, wasn't Dickie. Dickie. I don't Dickie, think in he fact, knows. He probably doesn't know. <laughs> yeah. He, but Mark, you may be tipping him off and this may yeah, end don't really say it. quickly. Hey, okay. we are, if you're watching us on YouTube, you're looking at three certified credentialed credentialed media members now <laughs> i mean it's just like that's it is what it is yeah media members can we get into games that's still unknown. the question unknown, unknown. because unknown. we haven't had a game tbd can we get into the press conference we did we did we were there guys here's a picture yeah can we check out brandon took this picture i took a picture matt took a picture i think we were just wondering when they were going to kick us out that's most of the it. time because we were wandering around before, not really <laughs> sure where we were supposed to go. And the guy's like, you here for the press conference? Well, like, yeah, 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 yeah. And Johnny Mallory's like, it's cool that fans get an access. <laughs> 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 like, yeah. yeah, okay. No, anyway. It was, it was cool. We yeah. went, we sat, we listened. We didn't ask any questions. Can I tell you one thing I noticed? Yeah. Let's talk about it. Uh, it's about the head coach. He's jacked, man. Dude, dude I told, I said Who, that when we met him in person a couple months ago. Dude, he's ripped. He doesn't. Yeah, Bit broad Big shoulders. Guy. If you had yes. to compare Harson, Avalos, and Danielson, Danielson. Well. Ooh, Harson we was pretty big. He had Harson. Avalos to me, was the smallest by far. Do you? But do you mind? Muscular. Go ahead. Okay. I, Harson had dad dad strength. Yeah. To me, I it looked like. That. And Danielson's got like trained. Still strength. young guy. He's I mean, young. he's like yeah. thirty five or something. He's yeah. still yeah. Jacked. I yeah, mean, yeah. good, good. And, and his yes. shirt wasn't tight. No. But uh, you could still tell. It, you it were was wishing. A, it was a polo. Yeah. Let's not get uh, into the Bush days of, of uh, no, <laughs> critiquing <laughs> skin. Yeah. And I'm just saying, dude, he's in good shape. He's in good shape. He's in good shape. Yep. Do you have to be as a football coach? Uh, Avalos was it? He, he Peterson was. In fine was. shape. If you, were, if you were to look, the better shape our head coach has been in, the better, more success we've had. Peterson was in like I'm gonna run Runners, on a yeah. green belt and be in great shape. He wasn't like busting. He wasn't no, busting. Beat coach sure. Pete. Beat coach. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But that. not in the weight room. No. No. We didn't try. <laughs> oh, he was not. <laughs> no, Come, on. Come on. Come on. Oh shit. He was in good shape. He's in good shape. Yeah. Yep. And then Harson, he he his mile time probably wasn't the same. Had good success. And then, you know, okay, we digress here. So We're in the weeds. Probably got to get out. Success is based on mile time, apparently. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but, I mean, that's cool for us when we started the podcast, uh, you know, oh. gaining access yep. to the media stuff. We had the first time we posted an episode, we had 11 listeners. Three were us. And there's no video. So eight were Mark's family. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your brother, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, so that's cool. Come a long we're, way. We're, yeah, coming a long way, and we're so. gonna we're gonna throw. I mean, we have full time jobs. We have, but we're gonna try and make it to some of these things. We're gonna get some practices. Yeah, right. Are we? Well, well uh, I I'm going to. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. I just there's a difference between the paid guys. Yeah. Yes. So 100. percent And, and we're not them. We we're are not, trying, not them. We're not them. We're not trying to be them. We no. are. We're coming from a totally different we, perspective. But it will be cool. I think once in a while to get a little bit of this access. I think it'll be cool. Yeah. 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 I think yeah we were helpful. looking. You know what. What new observations can we make by given by getting this new access? What people can we meet? What exposure can we get? It wasn't can we be beat writers for no, no. Idaho Press? No, because we're not those guys. Nope, um, they have a real job to do, and they have a real job. That. Yeah, we are not them. They understand that we're not them. Mm -hmm. After we left, they probably like shook their heads and laughed at us. <laughs> yeah, I'm like. What what is shirts? <laughs> what are the shirts and skins guys doing here? We didn't know, and we're like, that's a great question. Can I go over some of the <laughs> comments? Yeah, most yeah. people want to talk. We haven't we haven't discussed this. We've been discussing it all summer. The quarterback competition that was, you know, announced last week, I believe. Yeah, about ten days ago, we almost did an emergency pod, but it was just we had we were in Mark had too many patients. Well, we had a we had a funeral. We had different things oh, going that's on. True. It's hard for me. It is hard for me to go. I'm. I see patients for a living. What do you think? What do you yeah. think about Mad Dog getting the call and starting role? 
Uh, so anybody, uh, yeah. Uh, so obviously, I'm not going to sit here and say he shouldn't be a starter. I think anyone that says that, it just come on. Dirt Cutter, 40, yeah. 42 years experience, NFL head coach. I mean, all of those. They picked the right guy. I, I, I don't doubt that. There's for been times one. in the past, for week one, sure. There's been times in the past where you question the, the coaching staff. and Last year. Last year, the year before. <laughs> over and over. Yeah, I mean, the, the Avalos era, you know, and, and ulti- excuse me, ultimately you look back and we were there was probably some, like, yeah, why did they do that? The two QBs, <laughs> a lot of that. You're not questioning Dirk Cutter. If you are, you're not a serious individual, really. So I trust that they picked the right guy for the starting job week one or whatever. Um, the question for me is that, and I'm not. We're not going to sit here. We've, if you pay attention to Boise State football and college football, you've seen some of the national writers kind of pile on Ma- Malachi Nelson. I don't want to do that. Uh, you know the whole. Basically, he was a five star. He was a top recruit. Goes to USC. Third string there comes Boise. Can't even win the job at a group of five school. He's a bust. I'm not going to go there. I don't want to go there. We don't know that. Stuart Mandel had an um, interesting take. He did. I mean, they went through and reviewed a lot of the five star guys yep. and like their success. Oh, they did. Yeah, it, the success, the success rate is like thirty percent. Thirty percent. Like the guys that pan out. I actually yeah. want to talk about that because it's sure th- there didn't used to be this many five star ratings given really? to quarterbacks. So more have been given, and there's and which means you're. Success rate of calling, you know, or labeling wow. who's going to be a five star, is not as good. I want to go over that. So, yeah, what are we waiting for? Go well, ahead. You should pull up that. But I, I had I had more thoughts on that. It was on yeah. the podcast. Yeah, and that's the I think that's the interesting aspect. You know, so if you were to compare, I would rather come out as a three star. I know you don't get as many options. You're not as heavily recruited. I would rather come out as a a Mad Dog than a Malachi Nelson. I mean, Mad Dog came from what Draper. Utah? Somewhere in Utah. Okay, yeah. came from Utah, which yep. is a big state. It's a competitive atmosphere for football, sure. for sure. Yeah. But not like downtown LA, right? California. So you would think that you would, the, the amount of competition in California prepare you for the, for the type of competition here, right? You would think so. American Fork. But, American Fork, by the way. Okay. In my opinion, if you're joining a team and you are Mad Dog and Malachi Nelson at the exact same time, the amount of expectations that Mad Dog ha- that uh, Malachi Nelson has right off the start put him at a disadvantage, in my opinion. Because Mad Dog, he's only there to prove himself. He's only there coming from behind. He, he can do everything. He can put in all the work. He has all the motivation to earn something versus... He's got nothing to lose, right? He's got, well, he's got really nothing to lose. Whereas you're coming in at the top you could go down one spot and you've lost it all. I mean, yeah, that's what yeah. Mal- Malachi has done. And so all of Mad Dog's efforts and preparation has been to get on the field. And he did that, right? And so when you're hunting versus yep. the hunted, yep. I mean, the hunted, you you cannot, like if, if you're being hunted all the time, you cannot rest at all. And if you're hunting, you're hungry. I just think there's a big yeah. difference between that. And that's why what I think, you know, like LeBron has done or some of those guys that have come out with all the expectations in the world and, and met them, them yeah. and exceeded them. Yeah. I think what they've done is much, much more difficult. And so, you know, that five-star indication is so damaging. <laughs> it's like it's it tough. doesn't it's help you at all. Well, look at – I was reading um, a, some, an article about University of Utah, um, and they have a, a quarterback, Sam Heward. I think his name's Sam. He's one of the Heward Brock brothers, Hewards. Brock Heward's kid, or Brock oh, really? Heward's nephew. He's mm-hmm. one of the Heward, five-star kid. He's been, he was at UW for two years, didn't get off the bench, went to UC Davis, not even Davis, UC Fullerton, or one of those UC schools, an FCS school, and now is transferred to Utah. He's battling for the third spot. Mm. He was a five-star guy four, or five if, year, four years if, ago. What if he would have been a three-star? Right. And what if he would have, not everybody would have been so like, So it just happens, and... You know, I it's interesting because, um, I mean, by us saying this, we're kind of say I don't want to say that Malachi Nelson is a bust because he might end up being an amazing player who starts here and goes on in the NFL. He in, certainly may. In the press conference yesterday, Spencer said his he, time he coming. will get his number yeah. called at some point and during the season. So, here's another thing he said. We have two good quarterbacks. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Which is true. <laughs> Did you pucker a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> like, but, we're in it so, again. Or do it so again. here's the thing, though. I we I think two things can be true. He may end up being great, and at the same time, 
the number one overall recruit of whatever year that was two years ago, he shouldn't have been. And I, I and I'm okay saying that, and I'm not telling him a bus, but the number one five star recruit should be starting at a group of five school. Yeah. If he's not, then something but, went wrong in the evaluation process. That's, yes. their, that's their issue. Right. That's in their only issue. if those yes. people are right. If they're, that's what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying is, may, or something has gone on since he got to college. Yeah. Mentally, so, physically, whatever. He had an injury. I don't know. And I'm not going to bash on the kid. Uh, all I know is that Mad Dog's a starter. You know, and the one thing that's disappointing, if, if, if I may, is that when Malachi signed here, like everyone was on fire. Everyone, You were at the airport, Mark. I was not at the airport. <laughs> there was a group there. I was not but there. Did Chris but Marshall come because of Malachi? I don't know about that. I don't know about that. But I will, the, my issue, not issue, the disappointment comes in, there was a few month period there when we signed a five-star quarterback, the number one yeah. recruit of whatever, and you you had these dreams of like a Kellen, like a, we're going to have oh, a few years. We're going to have a few years of a really, Set really it. excellent quarterback play because we haven't had all league level plus. And so I think some people, maybe me included, had part of your expectations of the season is, well, yeah, you got a five-star quarterback running the show. And ultimately, that's not what's happening. And so I know some people are saying, and even nationally, well, this their expectations of Boise State were here. Because they thought the quarterback play was going to be a Malachi Nelson of our dreams. And then the reality is he's not there yet. We got Mad Dog. Should that change expectations? Should it? I don't know. But if your expectations were built on that, then it does. Yeah. Do, if do that the, makes sense. Do the people talking like on college game day, are they basing that off of Malachi Nelson or off of Maddox Madsen? Yeah. And, and, and I think there's been one other point that I wanted to make was there's been some like, like you said, maybe some doubting towards Malachi Nelson, right? Yeah. And I think doubt the system that got him the five-star because, yeah. you know, Stuart Mandel, when he talked about his, uh, or on his podcast about it, they're not great at picking five-star. They're, yeah. they're not. And so it's like, that's a ton of pressure for that kid. Yeah. And if he can't follow through, it's like, have you, you're going to end up in the bottom like the Heward kid. Yeah. Much more likely than you are rising to the top. Have you seen the NFL stats on that? The uh, amount of, like... Five star, four star, three star, two star recruits in high school that make it to the NFL. It's a pyramid with three star being the top. Really? Yeah, I can see that. I mean, it, pyramid it, scheme. Sure, <laughs> however you want to say MLM. it. But I mean, three and then two and four and then five and one. Really? The yeah. Five I mean, one? the oh, five is way down. Yeah, but there's a lot less. Numbers, okay, but less still, fives, I mean, it's just like, like a bell curve. I, it's a bell curve. I will say a, one thing, and not you'll to say be, a lot more. Than I one know. You'll more say than one. a lot. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to be critical, but I will. You keep saying that, dude. <laughs> I don't. I'm not going to bash the guy. Critical. I'm not going to be critical. I don't want I will. to. Well, why do you keep saying Mark, it? Just Mark, say what Mark, you're going to say. I'm going to say one thing, and I don't want to be critical. <laughs> lie, like, lie. <laughs> what? Okay. What? What are you going to say? I think there is a danger. What I I like listening to Malachi's dad. We've heard a few interviews with him, but when you listen to him and you and if you read the ESPN article about Malachi Nelson, it talks about his NIL agent. It talks about yeah. his team around him. Right. Okay. He's got multiple people that are on the payroll or good for I don't know who they are, and that this is a danger of that when you are at sophomore year or whatever junior year and you're super super highly rated. I mean, his dad talks about this is a stop boy, and they're just, they have these great grand plans of playing in the NFL. And it's like, you've got these agents and all these things. It's like, did we get a little far in front? Are you just putting so much pressure on this kid from a really young age yeah. to perform, to get to the NFL, to do this, that, and the other? Um, I think that honestly, that that should be dialed. It might be healthy for Malachi. To dial that back well, with the from the people around him, but I don't, I don't want to, I don't know that for sure. But it just that's it why just he came to like BSU, a right? Bit of that. Isn't that why he came to BSU? Yeah, to dial it all back. And okay, just, yeah. And maybe so that's I mean, they're doing. I think that's, that's where they're. they're doing. Hey, one thing that Grant Hedrick said when he came on, we asked him about you know transfer portal and whether or not yeah. he transfer. And he's like, no, if I would have been offered that money, I would have stuck it out. But he and, wasn't. He was but never. he wasn't. That wasn't. <laughs> so yeah, you can't say it if you weren't offered it. But. Maddox Madsen, I mean, yes, he's only a sophomore. He, would he have guessed he would have played 
you know, when Taylor Green was the quarterback? Yeah. No. I don't think so. No. Would he have thought he would have been the starter his sophomore year? I don't think so. So just stick around. You don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Is Yeah. It's a good point. I think That's the a message. tough decision, man. That's yeah. Just, I, I mean, mean, I think Booz, You like didn't Booz preface Booz that with, I don't want to be critical. Look, I don't want to be critical and make fun of anybody. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> but like, like, for example, Boozo in basketball. We'll see what we happens don't know. to him. He left. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to do it. <laughs> no, Brandon has a crystal ball. He knows what happens with Buzo. Yeah, I mean, Mark. it's. A, I think the interesting part about it is, you know, your your flashed money. Yeah. You don't know if you're going to get it, and that's why maybe having an NIL manager <laughs> would be a good one to have. But it's a tough call, man. I, anyway, I do think I still think the quarterback storyline will dominate the entire season. That every other storyline comes after that. Even Genty. Genty's Heisman, Genty's success, um, the defense, specifically the defensive backs, injuries. It'll all revolve. It'll start with the quarterbacks and say how they did because anytime Mad Dog has a bad game, hey, what do we got in the back? And and I think – I actually think Malachi will play every game. I think he'll do hot, a series. Hot or, take? That is a hot take. Oh, That's a hot take. I didn't even think about that. We, we'll, we'll check the receipts next week. Yeah, weekend. check the receipts. Do you think they're sensitive at all? I know it's a different coaching staff to to what happened last year and like purposefully will not inject, you know what I mean? I don't like, think Kurt Cutter cares. Yeah, know? that's a good point. I think I, it's super common to have a, a guy play if he earns the reps in mm-hmm. practice. Like if he's doing well, they're going to put him in for a series or a couple downs or whatever. I think they're happy to do that. That's why I'm confident in making that. But – I just worry about the storyline, more and more pressure on Mad Dog as it continues to go. But he he was in the furnace last year, Mad Dog yeah. was. He came in on third and 10, 12. And Tra- he, trailing at Memphis. Yeah, trailing at Memphis, trailing at UCF. And all. Like, he came in at tough times. And so all you have to do, and Cutter, Cutter said this yesterday, the best thing he has going for him is Genty in the backfield. Mm-hmm. That's the best thing he has going for him where it's like, relax, 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 get him the ball, get your tight ends the ball. And then there's eight guys on the wide receiver core. If you can, if one guy's getting locked in like Marshall or Caples or whatever, go to bolt, by the way, PSA, Dude, don't steal trucks, Can we get man. the truck back? I dude. mean, what the bolt, F is that truck. all about? Bolt dude? was a great guy, That's came bizarre. on our show. And someone steals his truck. That's <laughs> lame, man. He's like, I don't care about the truck. But he had some personal stuff in there. Bowling that's balls. Boring. Hopefully. <laughs> maybe some disc golfs. I know that's that's insured. Left-handed golf. clubs. Left-handed clubs. Left-handed clubs. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I've always thought, I, I think Madison, whoever starts, and, I, and Madison. especially Madison, if he just gets the ball without turnovers, which the coaches talked about it yesterday, kind of a problem. If he can just get the ball around, spread it around, they have so many guys, so too many guys. They have probably one of the better offenses in college football. Dude, Chenander, defensive coordinator at the press conference right. yesterday. He's like, you, you could sense that he was tired of getting beat down or <laughs> facing the offense every <laughs> practice. He's yeah. like, these guys are really good. Yeah. I wish he'd be saying our defense is amazing. Well, but he, he said he, they're really good. What he said, he's like, they win. Sometimes we win. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. He's like, sometimes we come sometimes on with the upper hand. Sometimes we win occasionally every now and then and tackle and we don't. But it's not. Anyway, I, I think that'll be the biggest storyline. I it, just always do. I mean, if yeah, I, you, I think you're right. Um, if the one way that it isn't is if Mad Dog just plays really well. Yeah. But as soon as we lose a game, we shouldn't lose. Or he throws a pit. You know, it's it's going to be un- just under the surface you remember remember the group of fans and fans there are fans that go that are for and against anybody even yeah. even Kellamore I'm sure there was fans that are against him probably maybe maybe but anyway <laughs> I just remember last year Talon was having horrible games and people would say why are you taking him out you can't take him out he's the best player on the field and you're like yes at times <laughs> but yeah. it was just wild to see I mean, the the fan support on both sides will be there. You know, the fan support for Malachi will be there. Yeah, 100%, so. it'll be interesting. Anyways, um, that's our yep. Tough job as a as a coach. Yeah. Figure that I out. I mean, the good news is that ultimately, here's a question that's way too early for this, but 
are both these guys back next year? Probably not, right? They both think they should I be starters. They will. I don't know. At I don't this know. point, you it, can't you assume probably not. anything. But, in but the football. reality is, if if Mad Dog takes off and he does has a great year, and we win a bunch of games, and he's Mountain West, some sort of team on Mountain West, then yeah, then okay, Why? that's our yeah. guy. Yeah, he's got two more years. He's not going to the NFL early. If he doesn't play well, Malachi comes in, takes over the spot, and he takes off. Then great. Yeah. I mean, as a fan, it's it's win win in my right. opinion. I agree. They probably aren't both here, but that's just the nature of the game next year. But this, you know, I think we got it. we're in a good spot. How I much agree. how much fuel does it add to the fire of Maddox Madsen, knowing that NCAA twenty five picked Malachi? Ooh. <laughs> And every uh, every national and everybody everyone. else and everybody else. I don't think he's used to it. He's I think a he's short, used to it. you know. He's he's probably been an underdog for a lot of his life, as far as just like stature wise, and I yeah. think it just plays into it. Well, so congratulations to him. Yes, congratulations he did. To him. He That's earned pretty. it. And if you think about it, take Malachi out of it. Kind of a three star. He had his he had New Mexico and Boise State offers. That was it, right for football. And he's the he's the starting quarterback at Boise State his sophomore year, and and some of last year. That's like. What Boise State? It's blue collar. That's Hermiston, Jared Zabransky. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's Prosser Washington. Prosser Washington, Ma- Mad Dog, five ten maybe. <laughs> Not a huge recruit. That's this yeah. is our team. This yeah. is who we are. Yeah. The five star that thing's awesome, but this is who we are. Can I bring up something else? We haven't won a game one since. Are you ready for this? You guys know it, right? Yeah. On the road. Do you know what? Hurricane Hank? Hurricane Hank. On the road. On the road. From behind, <laughs> yeah. Florida State. <laughs> that was such a bad game for those guys. <laughs> they suck. We have a, but we haven't They're won behind. a game one since then. Yeah, we had a home one in there somewhere, right? We, Did we? Won a, we won a season open. 2020? 2020. Who was that against? It was the COVID year, so it was a conference game, right? Oh, I don't remember. No, really? uh, Utah yeah. State. Throw it out. Okay. Throw it out. Yeah. That's a yeah, junk game. Throw that That's whole throw year out. out. We yeah. haven't won a game one in a long time. Yeah. And we used to, that used to be the marquee game for us. The marquee game, obviously, this year is week two, which is great. By yep. the way, I love we'll that. Well, yep. I made mention at the beginning when we were doing the opening on this podcast, we've been to Athens and we've been to Atlanta. Yeah. Yep. When we went to Athens, we yep. got whooped. 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 Six turnovers. How many? It was a lot. Had? Yeah. And then Atlanta went pretty well. I mean, those teams, that was a team. It's like those are different you, years. you apply those to a team and not a program. <laughs> yeah. But it would be nice to win a game one, and, and it, it's tough to know how good we are. And Mark said this a couple times. If we can't beat Georgia State. Southern. Southern. Southern State. That's, no. See, that's, that's the point. That's my point. They're in the Sun Belt. You don't even have the name <laughs> know, correctly. We got to We got to beat the team. But they have a good coach, and they have a decent team. Coach at USC. I mean, they, they certainly could win at home. Yeah. Game one. They certainly could because we're in a foreign location. We're in the southeast, really hot, humid, in a packed stadium, so and we have an untested team. According yeah. to Spencer Danielson, they're the best team ever. Yeah, dude. I, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> However, but they have to say that. They say they just, yeah. like, get after However, that. the facts are um, Georgia Southern, who are the Eagles, they were 6-7 and seven last year. But what were they at home? They were three and five in the Sun Belt. Six and um, one at home. Six and one at home. They ended the season with five straight losses. Yeah, did you? I didn't research. I didn't what happened that. there? Injuries. I don't know. Just I don't know. Played the best teams in their league. Maybe that that's a bad skid. So what were they I, at I home? think it's just a lot of question marks. I don't know. Yeah, the they were six I, I and one. Were, yeah, six, six and, and one right. at home. Mm. So yeah. that's kind of a thing. I mean, that was all their wins, essentially, right? It was all their wins. Yeah. They didn't win once on the road. And and Coach Helton's five and one. Five and one at home. Okay, five one. Sorry. Well, anyway, they're a good good. team at home. Yes. And uh, you never know what you're going to get. There's the first, like, basically the first quarter is a untested, who knows what's going to happen type situation, right? What's the biggest question mark for you guys? Besides the quarterback, right? Yes. We talked about the quarterback. I'll I'll chime in first. Okay. You have to have a good defense. And, And the thing about the defense is I'll give them time and grace because always at the start of the year, Missed tackling is there. Missed assignments because you're just a little unsure where you should be, and some guys aren't where they should be. The secondary <laughs> will lose. Step up. Will lose the game. It's worse than turnovers. The secondary can't allow long 20, 30, 30 plus yard passes over the top. Over I the mean, top stuff. Because if you turn back the clock a year from where we are now, Washington. I think that that lingered. Deep ball. You know, I think that, that that just, and maybe they were just bad, but it, 
they got burned so bad. It was a combination of it them was, being incredible and us being really bad. But it, yeah, but it was a. It, it started week one. But we have guys. We have new guys. Yep. We have an upgraded defensive back. Tubes is still there, which he's getting better. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Tubes. You know, whatever we say, I don't know. But my thing is, I think we win the game if we hold them to twenty-one points or less, because I think our offense is that good. Like I think our. I think our offense is incredible. We'll score 35 plus points a game. Don't hot take me on that. I think that's solid. I think it's we solid. Should. I'm just saying, I think if we hold them to 21 points or less, which is a, a decent margin of error to say we should be able to win a game. Yeah. Personal opinion on that. I think mine's just the first, the first week jitters, uh, going on, just all that stuff. I mean, I don't know if you guys saw any of the week zero games, but yeah. You know, Nevada. there was like SMU <laughs> came out twenty three <laughs> point favorites or something, had and a they game looked in the like bag. crap for three. It, it was partially SMU looked past Nevada. There's no doubt they weren't ready to go. They had crappy penalties. A guy spitting on someone. They just and then they woke up, and and Nevada crapped the bed at the same time. You know, literally at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah. Nevada should have won that game. But safety, the first, but the first <laughs> week stuff, um, I don't think that we're looking. I really doubt that we are looking past this team for Oregon. I think years past, maybe coaching staffs past, maybe. Um, I think with this group, the captains, the Hassanin, the Genties, I don't see oh, that happening. Keep going with that. Good the kicker, it. yeah, baby. Okay. <laughs> I don't see <laughs> yeah, that, dude. but you, but the, the mistakes, like the Nevada kid. Called for a fair catch. Yeah. Drop the ball on the yeah. one. They get a safety the That's, next play. Like stuff like that can, that can happen. You know what I would do if I were the special team coach? The person you put returning punts and kickoffs, you have to have like a senior, like Caples. Yeah. Because Holani was always smart about it. Yeah. But if you have a new guy in that's a freshman, like Sire Gaines, yeah. you're like, you never know. Dude, yeah. they're going to make mistakes at some point. Which, by the way, as a storyline, Sire Gaines. Sire Gaines. Yeah. yeah. Everybody talked about all the coaches talked about him. All three of them. True freshman. True freshman. They said, they said he's not your average 17 year old. He's ready. Is Breezy injured? I'm, I'm kind of catching that it's, through the Yeah, because I'm like, Breezy showed some good upside last yeah, year. Yeah, but I, know, I feel else. like listening to some of the. We need to go look. Of course, you can't report There's nothing but on I the depth. I feel chart. like, yeah, we don't have depth chart. A good yet, media but. person would tell us. I feel we were, like we were breezy tell us might, not to say anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like breezy. <laughs> well, you don't even if he was injured, they would have said genty, genty, genty more. They didn't really they just everybody genty is a known commodity mm-hmm. and they were talking about Sayer gains a ton. Yeah. I'm incredibly interested to see if he's lives up to the hype I, already. <laughs> they yeah. said he's gonna have a role. Sayer yeah. gains is. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited for it. I mean, we've just had we've been really lucky, oh. blessed, whatever you want to say, with running, running backs, backs around here. <laughs> Holy cow! But uh, there's an unbroken line of running backs that we've just had incredible. Back. Amount. It's incredible. Yeah. So well, if you go to one of our friend of the shows, not a known friend of the show, but he had a dream about us beating Georgia Southern. Southern. Oh yeah, and we won forty-eight to twenty-one. Dude, I I was playing NCAA twenty-five. I'm not great. I don't, I don't How do we do? Well, I couldn't be a Georgia Southern. Oh, Frank, <laughs> dude, who was quarterback? But that doesn't mean. <laughs> did you switch him out? Malachi. Did you switch him out, and dude? That was a problem. Matters. I just, I threw like 50 interceptions. Well, and Bronco Blameyer played and uh, he won. Mad Dog had, th- yeah, he was so the player the, of the game. Oh. The line is 13. We're, 13. we're favored by 13 favored on the road. That seems like quite a bit. That is a lot. I, do I, they know how we've done on spreads in the past five I, years, I 10 years? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that says. It's so many unknowns. They yep. have, they actually have a pretty experienced team. Listen to the coaches. They have a, a, a lot of, I can't remember the number, but a lot of returning starters. So, Dude, One thing I was thinking about, uh, Brandon and I were not going to ask any questions yesterday at the press conference. But if I had to ask a question, I would have been, it would have been along the lines of, this is uh, Dirk Cutter's 42nd year as a coach. Starting game. Yep. Start, yeah, his week one opener, 42nd. Danielson's first as a head, <coughs> excuse me, as a head coach. If you're Danielson, I know he's coached for a number of years. What's that feeling like knowing yeah. I've got Dirk behind me? Yeah. He's done this a bunch. I better not screw this up. Or no. are you looking to Dirk as like, hey, I've got this yeah. guy on my staff that knows how that. to get us there? 
Just, think, just a huge contrast. I think yeah. Dirk's been on the staff long enough with coming in with Andy that he feels comfortable like telling Danielson if he's like Danielson's making a big mistake here, he's like he's gonna tell him. Yeah. I think. I would think so. He did, he's done a good job of deferring. I mean, think about the experience level and everything you're just saying. Ooh. But I think Dirk has done like in his interviews and stuff does a great job of just yeah. like, hey, Spencer's done a great job. You know, he's just he's just. Dirk's a stud, dude. He's a stud, like, seriously, man. He's kidding? incredible. It's got to take Goodness. some pressure off knowing that, man, sorry. You all right? That Dirk is not in the running for Spencer's yeah. job. Yeah. He's <laughs> in it to help out with the program yeah. in whatever yeah. way he can. That that helps. If he had the, like, the Arkansas coach, speaking of Taylor Green, he's, like, on the hot seat. And guess who the offensive coordinator is there? Who? Oh, wait, Bobby, Bobby Petrino. Petrino. <laughs> yeah. He's just ready to take, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, Bobby's kind of a snake job. in the weeds. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so this is I, not that. Dirk is a I I I think Dirk. If, I think it would be. I think we've 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 said it. Dirk is I think with Chip Kelly and Bobby Petrino the best offensive coordinator in the country. Yeah, um, and I think if he can have fun this year and do what he did, you know, again in the summer and the off season, just go to McCall, hang out, and come back and start coaching. If he likes the team, he may do it again. Yeah, but. I was born 41 years ago <laughs> and he's coached more games than I was. Yeah. So I, I don't know, man, that's an incredible thing. I, I think Dirk's a man. I think he could be one of the biggest reasons why we have success this year. Well, there, I mean, honestly, if you take the, what you're saying about Dirk is I think in se- a few years from now, cause they, the NCAA has all these rule changes coming down the pike. Right. And one of them we haven't really talked about is th- I think they're lifting the whole like 10 coaching you can only have 10 oh, full, really? full-time pay coaches. And so it sounds to me, I remember reading something a few weeks back, that there's going to be more and more of these, you're the coach. You coach offense. Like the Chip Kelly's. Yeah. I doubt Chip recruiting. Kelly's traveling and recruiting. No, that's why he went. Yeah. Because he wants to so coach. So I think this is going to become a really common thing. And then you're going to get the young guy. Yeah. And so I don't. Dirk, I mean, we'll see. He's he hasn't said. I don't think he ever said this is just for one year. They just said it's a one year deal, like yeah. one year at a time. He's on a one year deal. Yeah. But who knows? Um, I know they're prepping someone else, and I, I'm, I'm a sh- Matt Miller, Matt Miller, or the other guy, Potter. Uh, Potter. Oh, yeah. yeah. Two so, good options. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll see how the year goes. But we 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 couldn't have asked for any better situation. I think there's a storyline. With the three coaches. Because we have three completely different coaches in Danielson, first-year head coach, Dirk Cutter, yeah. who's like the wise sage, and Chenander, who's kind of new to the area, new to the program, and in a, you know, elevated to a new role. Mm-hmm. And Danielson's the defensive, you know, specialist there too as well. And so I just wonder what that dynamic will be, especially if things get hard. I think coaching staffs when things get hard are, are a mess. When everything's winning, I think everybody's great. But that was one thing I saw yesterday that I thought, I wonder what the dynamic is in the coach's room with Danielson. But Danielson's so high energy, and he's super positive all the time. I doubt. I think that's what he is in the coach's yeah, room. Chenander's been doing it for two decades. He's okay. in Nebraska. He's fairly new here. Yeah, new here yeah. for sure. Couple but years I, I, I mean, he was DC when, at UCF, and that was uh, Nebraska. Nebraska, UCF, and Nebraska. He was DC, Oregon, yeah. Philadelphia Oregon. Eagles. Really? Well, he was Northern at, Iowa, and Ellsworth Community College. Dude, being a college coach would suck so bad. <laughs> it was suck, <laughs> dude. You don't know Me where you're around. at. No, you yeah. don't know where you're at. I don't know. I'm. What's your excitement level? What's your excitement level? I'm super pumped. I mean, game one. Yeah, there's a lot of mystery, a lot of unknowns. You don't know what to expect, obviously, but it's like, hey, we're rolling. Football season is going. I watched just the end of the Nevada game, but, you know, excitement about college football. You're watching games that normally I don't care about. I would not have watched <laughs> that game in the middle of the season. Yeah. But because it's college football and it's on, you watch it. So I'm excited because we're getting started. It's a new new yeah. regime. Yep. Spencer I- Danielson, we're, Avalos is gone, which is exciting for me. <laughs> I don't think it was good, and I think we're moving in the right direction. So I'm excited to start fresh and start new. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited because I feel like this off season and the last few have been filled with like these like doom and gloom situations with the uh, with the portal and NIL and the uh, conference realignment and getting left out and all these things that are very real and impact. But 
starting the season, it's like, now we play games. All that stuff, you just like, for the off season, now it's now it's playing games. I would say I'm as excited this year as I was. The last time I remember being this excited for a season was, uh, it would have been 2000, maybe 10 or 11. 10. Wow. When 13 we were, years So ago. I'll tell you why. We, it was it was in the middle of Kel- Kelamore. It was his sophomore year, so we'd already seen. He had played really well. And I was living in Arizona. And we had a great schedule, a great team. They played Oregon week Virginia one. Tech? Oh, we that's played Oregon, Oregon week Tech. one. And I just remember thinking, like, I could be off on the year one or two, but um, maybe it was 2009. It was 2009 season. But I just remember thinking, like, if they keep winning – they're going to the Fiesta Bowl, and I lived in Arizona, uh, so I was super pumped because yeah. I was like, "I'm going to that game," which I did. They kept winning. Yep. Went to the went to the TCU Boise State Fiesta Bowl. Um, oh, that sucked. And I don't know. I'm sure I've been excited, but and I'm always excited. We're always excited for the first first beginning of the season, but it feels different. It feels different. The Avalos the era. We're gonna look back and just be like. Man, you know, just so many question marks. So what it's it's great to on? it's great to turn that page, and uh, it could be a really good year. Yeah, the opponent isn't you know a marquee that, matchup, but well, we need that man. We yeah. need the first game of the last few seasons has been big. We yeah. need to win. I mean, what does that look like if we start zero and two? Because going against Oregon is not going to be easy. No, it's not. We'll get into that next week. But yeah, we if we lose this, we're going zero and two, right? Because we've done the zero and two start recently, right? Have we uh, or not? The last 0 2 start was the jo- lose at Georgia, then lose at Oregon State, which we went to. We went to that game. Yeah. Okay. That game so sucked, like, dude. That was bad. It's so like rain, 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 hail. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> did you, were you at that game, too? No. No. I didn't make the trip. Moyer was there. Yeah. Me, you, Moyer, my dad, my brother, someone else. Anyways. Well, your brother. I don't think friend, we've yeah. gone 0 2, have we? Dayton, will I don't know. F- figure that one. Out. Dayton, come on, <laughs> get after it. It, it yeah, we don't want to start zero two. No, we don't want to start zero two. It feels like there's been a year that we were on two, but I don't know. I'm curious how the then. I, I hate looking forward a week, but we can. We can. We're not yeah. paid coaches. Nope. Sure. Um, we're not even paid media. <laughs> we're not paid media. <laughs> we, we're not paid. <laughs> We've I'm been a, paying out. I'm losing money taking time yeah. off doing this. Uh, <laughs> I think the Oregon game will be such an interesting barometer, not only for us, but for them as well, how good they are. I don't know who they play week one. Idaho. So it's Keep not. Keep it in the state yep. for them. Yep, they're playing Idaho week they're, one. They just want to beat all of us. Yep. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Because I, Oregon's been picked by a ton of people as – the world beaters <laughs> I, I, on college game day. They of the panel, two of them picked them to be in the championship. The other two picked them to be in the Simon or something like that. I mean, they are number three, eight people They're They are very much. It's going to be very much like playing Washington last year. Now, are we better prepared and whatever? We'll see, but it's, we're playing that type of quality team. This yeah. is not the Oregon teams that we've beaten in the past that were good, but not top five. This yeah. is a top five team by all accounts, by their payroll, by their recruiting, by their coaching staff. Yeah. Um, I, I, and I, I think I said this several months ago, and I still feel the same way, and I hate to say it. I hate to say it. But you're going to say it. A win, losing by less than 20. Is a win. Is a win. And I say that because if you look at the entire rest of the season, we might go 11-1. and one. I mean, to get to the playoff, we need to go 11-1, and 10-2 at the worst, and then win the Mountain West Championship game, right? What's going to be important is not is not that – if we beat Oregon, that's huge. At the end of the year, they're going to look back at our schedule when they're looking at us or Memphis or Liberty, and they're going to see that loss at Oregon. And if it's 48-24 to 24 or 48-30, to 30, that doesn't stick out like an eyesore. If it's 48-7, to 7, that does. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Yeah. And so you need to keep it respectable. Did I know we, we're talking a week early, but did it, we keep it respectable against Washington? No, no, we're, not even close. Score? It was bad. It was high forties for, for to one half. We Nineteen. Did. Yeah, for did the we get first into half. the teens? Yeah, well, the first quarter. Yeah, they scored four <laughs> touchdowns in a row in the second quarter, and it was gone after that. What it was. What it was always over impresses 20. me about you is you'll watch the entire nine, game. It was 56 fifty-six to nineteen. 19, and it wasn't that close. And it was. It could have been. It was twenty-eight twelve at half. Well, so that was when they were just, oh. We got to get. They scored uh, 28 points in the second quarter. Yeah. So, Mark, you watched yeah. the whole game. You you oh, yeah. always watch the oh, whole I game. Oh, I will watch the whole I game. I watched that whole game. I yeah. can't. so painful oh, really? for me. It's just so painful. No, I'll do it. I will watch. You'll. <laughs> I will. 
I do. <laughs> the pain. I just sit there and take it, man. <laughs> so that. I don't know why, dude. So it's even impressive. if even if that game just on paper, if it was forty nine to twenty four, looks better than into the fifties and into the. You teams, know what we need? If it gets know? out of hand, we need a couple garbage touchdowns. No, I, exactly. Yes. I, I was telling someone. That, yes. Get them. No, it's them. important. <laughs> the onside you kick. Can't get, yeah. get a few if, more, dude. No, if they're emptying their bench, we you got to score. Keep starters in. Keep deep. scoring. Yeah, it matters. It matters. In this era, we don't know how it's all going to work out. 12-team playoff. We know that Liberty is going to go undefeated. I mean, they might lose to App State. They have one decent game. Uh, so we're going to, at the end of the year, we're going to be up against it. you got to, these things matter. Point differentials yeah. matter. Yeah. Uh, question. What are your expectations for Heisman, H-E-I-2, M-A-N, Genty, Heisman, two do, Heisman with the two, number instead two, of instead of the S, dot com is Genty's Heisman like profile page. It's a website. That's a website. It's, a website. it's live. I just yep. launched it, yeah. So yep. what are your expectations of Genty? Can I start? Well, hold on. What are your expectations? <laughs> I would like to tell you. There we go. Because <laughs> last year, the, the lone... Shining star was Genty. Every single game, we would say, we're going to run to win. So we would say every game, you have to stop Genty. And nobody did. I'm trying to think of a game that somebody stopped him besides well, him being we, injured. Okay. Taking he himself out. for the Colorado State game? No, he was there. We threw to McAllister a million times that game. Yeah, I just think uh, Genty, uh, I don't know, what are his stats? What? Can you look up Genty stats? For that? I just him, remember him getting first downs, breaking off big plays, being a solid contributor every single game. I'm worried. I'm a little worried that he's going to have an off game or two just because everybody's cued in on yeah. him and just because he's sure. like the he's the hunted now. Sure. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he's got to work harder than everybody else to surpass what he did last year. Colorado State, he only had 212 yards rushing. Yeah, off game <laughs> for him, right? <laughs> How did we lose that game? 160, 167 <laughs> against San Jose State. 82 <laughs> against Memphis, which is a better team. But we were down. We were down oh, 205 yards against San Diego State. 43 against... Wyoming? No. Oh, I'm going backwards through now. the year, it looks oh. like. Was he... Because he was who's, injured a couple of games. North Dakota. North yeah, Dakota. they bottled them up good. Yeah. They bottled up our... Yes, we they did. North Dakota the last year. Yeah, yeah. University of North Dakota. And we didn't, we didn't, like, kill them. We didn't kill them. And they, okay. they were Big surprise on the, on, the, uh, on the line as anyone. I bet you we just didn't. I mean, look, come It's probably on. base, bland stuff, you know, but they bottled them up pretty yeah. good. I mean, yeah. 1,300 yards rushing last year. Yeah. That's a lot. And he didn't That's play two games? No, he played. No, he no, was, he was injured. injured early he was Wyoming. In one, and Wyoming, he only had fifty three yards. He was injured in that one. Utah State, eighty one yards. But he was out an entire game. Yes, at home. Yeah, I remember. Mm -hmm. He was out. He got injured against Hawaii, and then he was out the next game. Anyway, anyway I guess they're going to get him the ball. What twenty five times a game? They should. I mean, they should. You have no reason not to. Yeah, and so he's going to get 100 yards, all-purpose yards, pretty easily, 100 right? easy. I mean, the question is, is he getting 200 a game, all-purpose? That's the question. Man, that's a heavy load. It's a heavy <laughs> load. That's a lot. But he could do it. I mean, he was doing it last year we yeah. had, when our offense was just struggling. Yeah. You know? Uh, my expectations, uh, it's going to be hard for him to meet. He's not going to – He his goal is to rush for 2,000 yards. That's – that's tough. That's big 200 numbers. yards a game, essentially. Well, no, 170 no, a game. but it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, but his, he re he's such a good receiver. Yeah. Such a good receiver. He's going to have 20. I think, I think the goal is 2,500 all-purpose yards for him. Yeah. He, he had can five, do it, He had dude. 569 yeah. receiving yeah. yards last year. So, so he's in the, like, 1,900 range for... And that's not yeah. playing a game or two. I, I just – Yeah. And that's not having a – I mean, some of those games, UCF, Memphis, what other games do we, where you're just sputtering on offense? <laughs> there was – And, you know, we just couldn't get an identity going on, especially UCF. But I guess UCF, we were moving from the 20 to the 20. Yeah, we scored, scored by score. 16 points, yeah. Anyway, I, I think he could. I think his storyline will be really interesting, how well he does with all the other things going on. But you know we're going to lean on him super heavy. And we should. Yeah, yeah, the key is, and this is not to jinx, but to keep him healthy. Yeah. That's the thing, right? Yeah. Hey, one thing they talked about at the conference was they have oh, a GPS, GPS tracker yeah. for every yeah. player. They all have the, their little things they wear. What they does that look mean? look like sports bras, basically. What does that mean? 
Well, I know they can they can check their heart rate and all that stuff, and they can check their speed. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So if their I'm burst sure their of steps, speed starts to decrease, then they can make they pull them out. Well, yeah, is that mid game? Yeah. Are they wearing them in games? No, but they were just saying. I think like a Hassanin was one that they were looking at, and so like his speed burst compared to when he's fresh. Oh you know, yeah. They, they so look they, at that. they have a calculation. This is interesting. Okay. On their GPS, that at a certain point, based on their calculation, they're more prone to get injured, and they pull. That makes sense. Yeah, I guess. And so, I don't know what the research is on that, but I'm sure. There yeah, is. they're just like it's a yeah. co- probably a combination of fatigue, amount yeah. of time played, can uh, like back to back. And so, huh. uh, I think it's that like a was pitch count almost. It's a yeah, it's a pitch count, effort huh. count. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> how much effort you've expended. And so I thought that was really interesting. I do think on defense, if we're going to switch topics, sorry. Sure. Um, there's going to be some key players that have to hold down the fort for a while until somebody else emerges. What if Hassanin goes down, right? We don't. We have a lot of what, unproven. What position does he play? He's D, D like end. D end He's or D-end, stud yeah. or whatever. Um, I think, yeah, we, we have a lot of guys there. I think there's a lot of unproven guys. And then the other one is the linebacker. I know we have Simpson three good linebackers. Notriani? Sim, Simpson, Notriani, and they talk a lot about, um, what's the other guy? Uh, <laughs> there's no linebacker. They've been talking about uh, J- Rip. Jaden Virgin? Rip. No, he plays the other end. Okay. Plays another end. But anyways, it's right. like there's going to be injuries. There's injuries yeah. every year, you know, but early on, you don't want you don't want to see Genty Hassanin and Simpson go down, right? Oh, I mean, it just... It's Mark just jinxed our whole That's team. That's not a jinx. Come on. <laughs> it's just there's some unproven spots. Right. And uh, yeah, I think that's why the defense had like those guys on each of those levels, like Hassanin and Simpson, maybe Notriani. And then I don't know who's going to show up, Benefield or like Benefield a lot. Benefield, who? McCoy. McCoy. The real McCoy. The Mario snake. McCoy. The I snake think they got charmer. About. The snake nephew. The snake charmer. <laughs> and then they got the new guys at DB. So, yeah. you know, and who who's, uh, gosh, why can't I think of the safety's name that Tubes? comes down? Tubes. You know, so they got some experience with okay some there. skill. Yeah. But it'll be interesting. There's, like, one guy on each level. They're like, hey, you you got to make some serious plays to start out until some other people start emerging. Like what happened last year and Simpson emerged, Hossin yeah. emerged. Yeah, people will emerge. Yeah. I think those are interesting storylines on the defense. I, I expect Simpson to do good things. Yeah. I liked him last year. Do you remember he had the club? Yes. I don't think he'll no have club. it this year. But no club. Whoa. if he's not doing well. Is that well, good or bad? Maybe he goes back to it. The double club? <laughs> wow, <laughs> dude. He'll be like Thing on the Fantastic Four, just like <laughs> smash it. <Boom. laughs> yeah, I think the defense will be super interesting. And the defense may be – I hopefully the offense is so high-powered mm-hmm. that we just say, look, you just got to convert key situations. Get off the field on the first – you know, keep it to a reasonable score in the first half and then make key stops in the second half. Is there any way we – what was our points per game last year? 33, 32? It was in the low 30s. Low yeah, 30. 32, I think. Is there any way we don't score more points than last year? I mean, the only way would be maybe our competition we're playing against, Oregon, Oregon State, Washington State. Is it, Maybe yeah, it's better. Most of those are at home. Yeah. Uh, and I, don't know I, I just that like, how do we not average 35 a game? Yeah, like, I agree. I just, looking at the, the coaching staff and like, just we're going to have a quarterback. I trust that we're going to have a quarterback situation that's stable. And last year was so unstable. And we still scored 32 a game. That's not known like yet. There's no way we don't score more than three points more would put us at 35. Feels and like now, we're a touchdown better. Yeah. Third, Feels like we should be a touchdown better. Dude, we jumped. Year. And if you look at the lead we had at Memphis, we were up 21 nothing or something like that. Were we? Or was 17 that nothing. State? It was 17 Oh, yeah. Nothing. And then they came back and got up like 31 17 or something. It's like we would score and then sputter. Yeah. And so if we can keep that going, I think well, you're right. I think we should have more than we three would. Five we would field goal, mm. kick six. Thing. Scoop um, and score. Yeah, I agree. With, I agree with you. I mean, and that would put us in the top offensive scoring teams in the country. Yeah, top 20. I bet you that'd be top 10 if we were certainly close Not to 30. the 40s. Close to the 40s, yeah. I think we could. I think they, everything's there to I do it. I think 35. If you were averaging 35. You have to average more than 30. Dude. If we don't, it's a disappointment. We, I'm going to say that right now. One name we haven't mentioned on offense that's going to be a, a role player, Matt Louder. Yeah. Ah, I'm excited dude. about him. Wow. If you've got yeah. a tight end, and, and Cutter said that. I think he's like looking back, there's some regrets that they didn't use. Yeah. And, and yeah. Cutter wasn't the coach, but right. it's like, 
They didn't use them as much as they could have. How do you use all these? Like, how do you use yeah. Louder and Genty and Sire Gaines? And then let's go to the wide receivers. You're on Bolt. You're on Strong. What you're a good on we, sound, we sound like a BYU podcast right now. We are winning. No, we're going to be amazing. Baby. Yeah. <laughs> Give right. it to You're us. You're right. <laughs> Get off Cougar board. Get the Cougar tails flowing. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is horrible. You're right. You're right. You're right. I'm Seriously. An idiot. Ah. Stop no, it. Hey, no, no, no. But we... We didn't have this last year. We uh, we seems like <laughs> we we're deeper didn't. in the skill positions. Yes. It does. We were pumped about Taylor last year. What Arkansas I mean, is Genty, pumped about Jay Taylor this year? We'll see. I, I, we didn't have as many weapons last. I year. I don't think. No way. Right. I didn't. I don't remember. No, who our we had McAllister who quit, <laughs> and the other guys were unproven, younger. You know, well, and Bolt Cobb, was injured. Cobbs and Bowens just didn't really. You know, and yeah. and the other um, number three now the. And the slot guy that's back this year. Oh, Caples? Caples was out. And we yeah. didn't know how much Genty was going to break out. We didn't know. We didn't know. Holani is, speaking of, Holani. Having we'll a good season. Well. I think he's going to make the team. Today's cut day in the NFL. I think he's making the 53 wow. roster. Good for him, He's man. played really well. Good he was him. a great He was a great running back. He just, he just couldn't bug. stay healthy. Yeah. yeah. Well, if he doesn't, you know, do the full load well, at he Seahawks. Hurt. He yeah. got hurt week Well, one he won't. At uh, Washington. Yeah, yeah he did. Yeah. First quarter. <laughs> he did. We were up in the first. <laughs> yeah, it was. There Hawaii. we go. It was Hawaii, really? Yes. Yeah, he got Tammy. deemed on the leg. I out. actually, I actually uh. do remember being excited about Holani and Genty being in at the same time. Yeah, they. Well, they, remember they kind of like were. Oh, we're gonna have two. Yeah. two running backs at the same time. Thunder, Thunder and lightning, baby. Uh, mm, I wonder if they're gonna do that. With, if Sire Gaines is that good, do they put him? In, I think they're gonna use Crow. Sounds like from all accounts they're gonna Pull use back. Crow. Pull back. Yeah, and kind of the, that two back system and he's blocking or whatever. I don't know. I'm excited. We're excited. I think it keeps coming back to the offense. <laughs> it always comes back to the offense. <laughs> Outscore the other team, man. Um we didn't talk about this, but we probably we haven't played again. We need to do predictions for the season. Oh, Not game by true. game, but overall. Do you have the schedule? I can have the schedule. I'll I'll I I I'll start right now. We're gonna lose at Oregon. We're gonna lose one more game. Gonna, you're throwing in another game. I'm going eleven and two. We're going to win the Mountain West Championship. So it's saying, hard. It's hard to repeat. It is really hard. We haven't. We haven't done it in a long time. Uh, Wasn't it Wyoming I said we were going to lose to last year? And we were just laughing at you or whatever. We, we, we didn't well, we, we beat Wyoming. Yeah. We lost to a lot of teams last year. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Six games. Like, just, I mean, I'm excited. The other reason I'm excited is just think about last year, like the twists and turns. Now, it was brutal and painful to go through, but it was Crazy interesting. It was wild. It was wild. It so was a roller who knows, coaster. It, this year's going to be great. There's going to be crazy and weird year too. to start a podcast. Yeah, it was. Uh, Georgia uh, Southern Mark, win or lose? We're going to uh, win. Oregon. Lose. Portland State. Win. Washington State. Win. Utah State. Win. Hawaii. Win. UNLV. That's a tough one. Uh, I'm going to go with, I have another loss in here somewhere. We'll go with win for now. San Diego State. Win. Nevada. Win. San Jose State. That's at San Jose State. Mm -hmm. Yep. Win. Wyoming. Loss. Ooh. And Oregon State. Yeah. And I think we win. We rebound. That's who I was going to say. It was our loss. What what losses do you have? Oregon State and Oregon? You think the, the state, state of, of Oregon, Oregon owns us? <laughs> I was are you going think, eleven. Are you going win eleven and two as well? I mean, I don't know. I I just I, can't think. I know UNLV was picked really high. Yeah, but second. but some second. people pick us and we suck year, some years, yeah. right? And so I don't think the the rankings matter. Plus, they lost their best quarterback. Yeah, the freshman guy. I don't know. I just I need to see them prove it. I'm sure they're a good team. Yeah. I don't know how good they are. Um, I think. I think it's Washington State or Oregon State, or one of the ones that I knock us that. off, just because we're a little unfamiliar. I think the Mountain West, uh, we could we could have three if we lose if we drop one to Washington yeah. State and Oregon State, we could have our one annual yeah one at home or away that we just lay an egg at. I yeah. don't know, man. Yeah, I, I I'll probably agree with you, but I'll throw it into the pack two that gets okay. us one of them. All right, All right. <laughs> Matt, what you got? Eleven and two, or worse or better than that? Um, just go losses. Just go yeah, losses. I, yeah, I think two. I don't. I, Oregon is one for sure that I think we will lose. Um, and it comes down to Oregon State. I don't think Washington State is going to be good. Um, I'd say Oregon State or UNLV. I'll say UNLV just to be. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, two losses. Two UNLV so losses and one. Pack two, uh, pack two loss. <laughs> oh, is that you, what you, you no, I said, UNLV, I said right? Wyoming. Oh, you said Wyoming? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's the that's the competition at this point. 
Okay. Wyoming, UNLV, and <laughs> Oregon State. Oregon State. But we're all going 11 and 2. And, and Gosh, if we lose so, that Oregon State game, oh, that would be brutal. That's the day after I know, Thanksgiving. Last, yeah, last. <sighs> or Thanksgiving weekend. Because we might have something on the line. You know, know what I mean? I know. <laughs> I know. And you don't want to lose going into that. You don't. Right? It's well, so much you, better to lose early. Because we got to be top group of five teams. We'll know. Conference champion, if we're though. in the conference tournament probably by then. There'll be some other games maybe that have to play out, I guess. But. I guess we won't know. We, we may have not have to win the conference championship. Yes. We have to. Oh, How yeah. many Mountain West but losses did count. we have last year? San, San Diego State, Colorado State. I think it was just Fresno. San Diego State, we won. We beat um, San Diego State. So it was Fresno. Oh, Colorado State and Fresno. I think that was it. Fresno State, Colorado State. And then yeah. we lost yeah, three out of conference games yeah. in the bowl game. Yeah. So we don't, man, we, we always lose one Mountain West game. Yeah. We don't play Fresno this year, right? Right. No. And we don't play Air Force. We don't play San Diego State or we do we play do San Diego State. Yeah. yeah. It's a wild schedule. Yeah. I don't know. Should be fun. Should be fun. Will be fun. Will be interesting. Should be good. Yeah. We're Should excited. be. Good. <laughs> we'll, have, we'll have more to talk about next week. Yeah. Big week. I'm just super happy that fall I can cook. Brats on the yeah. grill oh, and yeah. watch college football and smell freshly cut grass. Like that's like some of the best best times of the year for me. Great time of year. Yeah, for sure. It's well, a good time. Get out of here. Hey, thanks for uh, watching today. Again, if you are on YouTube, uh, like, subscribe, subscribe, do all that stuff. Uh, that helps us get the word out. Gets us more listeners. Hey, that was hot. That was hot, man. <laughs> Brandon that coming was super in hot. Hot with the outro. Um, anything else? Uh, like we said, you know, you might see us on the sidelines of the games. You might see us in the press box. <laughs> you won't recognize us. <laughs> like we're not. Yeah, you will. We're not that interesting. Yell at us. Uh, we have some shorts, YouTube shorts that we've been putting out. Check those out. Check those out. A lot of people have been liking those. Yeah. Kind of good. Yeah. Uh, again, thanks for watching. Uh, we will be back. It's Labor Day weekend. So Tuesday, possibly. Uh, We'll figure it out. We'll, we'll figure, figure it, out. it out. Yeah, post, post, game. post game one. But that's why you subscribe. So you know yeah. when the new they, episode will comes they know? Out. They'll get oh, a notification. They'll get notific- they'll get notific- subscribe. Yeah. Smash that notification button. Isn't it a bell? Just smash do it. it. Whatever it is, do it that. well. All right. See you guys. Catch you next time.